If you botch this, I'm gonna come over and kick you in the face. Hello and welcome to my lab. I bought a paramotor and uh, you might be wondering what is a paramotor? That is a fantastic question. You see you take a paraglider and uh, a motor and you put them together and you get a paramotor. This particular one is a gravity defiant which comes as a kit which is why it's in pieces. I'm going to have to assemble this and uh, there are official videos on how to assemble this so I'm not gonna like go completely through it but I figured I'd take you along with the with me and give you my view on uh, how easy the instructions are to follow and maybe anything to watch out for as I go along. Uh, and then when I'm done with this, this thing's going to allow me to run along and just fly up into the air and do whatever the heck I want up there. Why in the world would anyone want to do that? Well, that's also a fantastic question. And as all great questions in life, there's no real answer. So let's get to it. Okay, quick update. Uh, not much... Mm. <laughs> Quick update. Uh, everything is going pretty well so far. It doesn't look like a whole lot yet because we're just building different components. Once it starts to come together, it'll really start to look like something. Uh, but I do want to talk about this here. This is the first real issue I've run into. These were far too tight. Uh, they did say you could take a screwdriver and open them up. Uh, even with doing that, they were just too tight. So I had to go in and just use some sandpaper and I kept just shaving it down and shaving it down until they would slide on. Um, but now they're on there, so just a bit of extra work on that. Uh, so with that, I'll just keep going and I'll touch back in when it starts looking like something. So putting the throttle together, I've got a weird throttle, which you've probably seen, the chameleon throttle right here. Uh, so the package, it just, it comes with hardware that I don't really care for. If you see, this goes on in theory, it goes on there, down there. And it doesn't work very well though. Uh, this slides out too easily. I can see that um, here with this hole, you're supposed to use this, like a standard, um, crimped brake connection. And I don't have the stuff to do that, so I think I'm going to do it right and just order that and get that in there. Because I don't like what this has been coming together as. So uh, we're gonna have to pause for a sec while I order some stuff.
So the only other thing that was different from the instructional video was the harness. I have the Dudek harness and they use a different one. Uh, so the Dudek harness was made to attach to tubing and uh, this isn't tubing obviously. So uh, it's a little different and it made me a bit nervous. So uh, if you do use the Dudek harness, just be aware it's gonna be different from the instructional video and you're gonna have to kind of work your way through that. With the harness attached, assembly is complete. So now the only issue I have is that I don't have any way of carrying the paramotor to anywhere I might want to fly. So the next thing I did was design and fabricate a carrier that goes on the back of my car. I created it with two major principles. Uh, first of all, I wanted to be able to uh, uh, add it or remove it from my car relatively easily. And also I wanted to be able to simply set the paramotor on this plate and use four toggle clamps to uh, lock the thing down. I designed two of the toggle clamps to uh, lock onto the side of the fuselage, just kind of piggybacking off of that uh, grounding strap on the side. And then the other two, we're gonna use rubber straps to clamp onto the bottom hoop section. I made sure that the carrier was just small enough to fit into the powder coating oven because powder coat is the best. And with that complete, it's now time to test it on the road. Above 35 miles an hour, the propeller started to go nuts. So I decided to use just a little cargo net that I found uh, to hold the propeller to the frame. And uh, that's how I've been doing it ever since. And with the carrier tested, I can attach my paramotor to it and then run the uh, motor's break-in cycle. Uh, so that's a little bit intimidating at first, but it works really well. With the break-in cycle complete and having to wait just a little bit longer for the wing, there's nothing left to do but to fly. If you botch this, I'm gonna come over and kick you in the face.
Hello and welcome to the future. I've been flying around for a while now and I've got quite comfortable with it and I've made a few changes. So I'd like to just uh, kind of recap the changes that I've made since, uh, since then. Uh, I got a parachute installed now and uh, all I did for that was I, I grabbed the, um, the parachute pouch from the Parajet Maverick and I put that on my Dudek harness. The next thing and probably the most important thing is I've had to move my uh, fuel line. The way I had it actually um, had it cutting itself against the strap on the, the airbox. So make sure your, your fuel line is not touching the strap of the airbox. Uh, that will just, that's like a razor blade just cutting against it. And I, I cut like halfway through a fuel line before I caught it. So I'm glad I caught it uh, early on that. But now it's um, wrapped in some fiberglass and moved around. So it should be, it should be safe now. Uh, and then the other really important thing is I changed out the, uh, the throttle cable. So that chameleon throttle looked interesting, but uh, it just, in the end, it just didn't fit my hand. Uh, it, w it wanted to like push out of my hand and I found myself uh, thinking about the throttle a lot while I was flying. And so you don't really want to be thinking about the throttle while you're flying. Uh, so here I've replaced it with the uh, air, um, the air conception throttle and that is just fantastic that's pretty much what i would recommend to everybody uh, what i like to do on these though is they're a bit long there's a bit extra on the on the uh, lever here that you don't really need uh, so i just took a hacksaw down measured measured what my two fingers would uh, contact with cut that down sanded it down and now that's a perfect height for me and then what's nice is also you can you know put your uh, tachometer right here. So that's just very convenient when you're running, you can just take your, your throttle and look at the RPM and stuff like that. So the fourth and final thing down here is uh, there's this uh, net tensioner that comes with the, this thing and it's kind of bulky and uh, uh, kind of in my opinion, a little bit over-engineered. So uh, the first one I had actually kind of bound up. Uh, it, there was some galling of the metal and it just, it fused. Uh, so they, they quickly and happily replaced it with a new one. Uh, while that was shipping to me, I actually went ahead and solved the problem a different way. And I ended up liking the way that I solved it so much that I never even bothered to reinstall the new one. Uh, so all I did was go in here with some, uh, some knots. <laughs> all I did was uh, replace it with some knots. All it is is um, a couple of uh, essentially pulleys made out of rope and then uh, you can pull this tight and then uh, tie that off with a couple of half hitches and that's it after quite a bit of work I've got my paramotor just the way I want it and that's the end of the video so uh, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time